Mr. Crispin here once again. In today's video I'm going to show the steps I've taken to convert an existing garage into a fully insulated workshop suitable for engineering. It's taken me a little over 18 months and uh, along the way I've taken video clips to show you what's gone into it. Uh, it has taken me a long time and in between all these jobs you're about to see in the footage there has been a lot of fiddling around working out how to do stuff and uh, collecting materials. Um, anyway, hopefully you'll find this interesting. Uh, we start back in February of 2017 when I started lifting the floor up, so here goes. You know that XYZ looking one, the Cartesian one? Yeah. I've been tinkering with that off, on and off, you know, over Christmas and start of January. It's quite a machine now. We lifted the hell to a carriage, a friend of mine from a school. Well, thanks to Harry, that's all the sand up. Next is the soil. The floor is nearly ready to go now. Uh, I've done three concrete floors myself in the past, and as a result, I've decided to pay someone to do this one for me, and hopefully it'll end up uh, flat. Um, as you can see, we've got this waterproof membrane in now. Underneath here, at this end, we have the uh, compacted hardcore. That end was already concreted, so what we're going to do is just pour straight on top of the existing concrete. The uh, steel mesh is in and uh, the concrete pump has been assembled, just waiting for the lorry to turn up. All the concrete's now in and we're just waiting for it to dry a little more before using a power float to polish it. Up here in the roof you can see that the horizontal pieces are currently all over the place and I want to try and level them out and raise them up a bit so to do this I've taken two brand new pieces of wood, one at the far end and one that the camera is sitting on. I've put them at the right height and got them uh, level and then I've run these two uh, chalk lines uh, between them and uh, I'm going to go along raising all the uh, pieces of wood up to that height and that should give me a nice level ceiling.
I'm now sawing up all the plywood boards to fit on the wall and I thought I'd show the method. I'm using a, a normal circular saw and um, to get the circular saw to cut along the line I want it to I've got this makeshift rail and uh, this is basically a piece of uh, plywood screwed to a nice straight batten and uh, the gap from here to here matches the gap between the fence and the blade so, uh, or should I say the edge of the saw and the blade uh, so what happens is I line up the edge of the plywood with the cut I want to make and then the saw follows this rail and the blade ends up in exactly the right place and uh, I'll show that in action now so this is the rail here and uh, to make it I just put an oversized piece of plywood on and then I ran the saw down and uh, hey presto you get the edge cut in exactly the right position uh, the only thing to watch is that you don't um, put the saw on the wrong way around or else you end up slicing the uh, thing off that one must have been my brother so uh, all you do to use it is you line it up with your pencil marks and then uh, get the saw and away you go I'm now just fitting the plywood panels uh, as you can see and I found that it makes a neater job if I put the countersink in first then drill the hole then put the screw in otherwise it starts to peel the grain off uh, and to get all the hole positions uh, the same all around the room I've come up with this thing uh, which I'm going to call a ladder jig it's basically a piece of wood with a load of bits screwed on it and you just rest this against the wall and then rest your countersink on all the shelves. On to uh, insulating the ceiling now and uh, I've removed all the lights temporarily and I'm going to do this in three parts. We've got a flat section across the top and then we've got the two eaves down each side. Uh, at the moment they're all a bit out of line and so if I just screw the plywood board straight on not only will I get a wavy surface I'll also get big gaps at the two uh, joins top and bottom. So to try and even them out I've put another uh, chalk line up and between the two high spots at the ends and then I have um, gone along and measured the gap on each piece of wood and then uh, cut a packer so I've got a couple left to go here today I've got Ryan here helping me and he is smiling underneath the mask he's uh, cutting the insulation up and we're gonna put it uh, up in the ceiling shortly Just before I finish insulating the ceiling I've decided to uh, wire the lights in and I've got George here helping me and you may notice his USB chargeable woolly hat with a built-in USB light. 
Thank you for your help, George. No problem, I'm sure I'll get it back sometime. Roof insulation is nearly done now. I started at the far end and I'm nearly at this end. Uh, so far the method has been to screw one sheet up at a time and then to reach in over the top and lay the insulation down. And with these being uh, four foot wide sheets you can just about reach all the corners and check everything's flat before screwing the next board up and uh, repeating the process. Um, on the sides here I've just been cutting the insulation so it's a snug fit and then it almost holds itself in while you screw the next board on. Uh, with these boards, rather than trying to get a really accurate cut to uh, meet all the walls and ceilings accurately and neatly, I've just cut them on the size by about 10mm and then um, cut some strips up with a circular saw that fit on in the corners. And that just makes life easy because I can just uh, screw the board straight up and I don't have to worry too much about getting nice fits. Insulation wise I'm using this uh, wool and that's 100mm uh, thick and uh, I've got about 6 inches from here to the felt so that leaves me a ventilation gap behind the insulation. Uh, I could have used Celotex but with these all being awkward and irregular shapes it would have been quite fiddly to cut it all so uh, anyway I'm nearly there. Well that's that, uh, next up I'm going to varnish it all. Nearing the final stages now and I'm varnishing all the plywood. Uh, I've got through my sixth tub of uh, floor varnish and so Stephen here's taken pity on me and uh, come to give me a hand. Um, following this all that's left to go is painting the floor and uh, from then I can start moving machines in and once I get everything in then I'm going to uh, do the electrics to suit. I'm now painting my floor and to do it I'm using a two part epoxy paint. Uh, in this case it's four parts of grey paint to one part of epoxy hardener. Uh, I'm using a DIY type roller to apply it and uh, I'm doing two coats. So far it's going okay. Um, I got the paint off eBay, uh, Black Country Paints and uh, for the area which is about 36 square meters uh, I'm going to use about 10 liters so that's where I'm up to I'm pleased with the result and uh, as you can see behind me I've started moving some bits and pieces in uh, I've got about another six or seven machine tools coming and uh, you'll see those in my next instalment which will be called Equipping a Workshop. Uh, so other than that, I hope you've enjoyed watching and see you on the next video.